Now, how many functioning razor blades have you thrown out because they got oxidated and rusty? Ew. And how much usable toilet paper have you wasted because you didn't know any better? Luckily, that can change if you follow some simple tips. Now, let's say you've just arrived back from the grocery store. The bags are full of fresh produce and refrigerated items. If you're a type A person, you probably look at your empty fridge and start throwing your groceries inside without any type of organizational system. Now, if you were a type B, maybe you stop for a moment to assess the situation and try to figure out the best way to distribute your food. No matter which scenario you fit into, I bet you've been storing some essential day-to-day items in a very wrong way. Take eggs. We're used to them coming beautifully placed in their little carton packages, ready to be picked one by one and transferred to the egg compartment located on the fridge's door. But have you ever stopped to wonder whether that is really the best place to store your eggs after all? Turns out, it's not the ideal place for them. The refrigerator door is one of the warmest parts of a fridge, as it is being constantly opened and closed, compromising the egg's overall quality. According to food safety experts, there is such a thing as the correct order to store food inside the fridge. Refrigeration plays a large role in keeping your food safe. The first rule of keeping food fresh is to always check the temperature in the places where you store it. The temperature inside kitchen cabinets should be between 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 70 degrees. And when it comes to the fridge, it must be around 37 degrees Fahrenheit, while the freezer should mark nothing over 0 degrees Fahrenheit. Store your refrigerated foods by cooking temperature, from the lowest temperature on the upper shelves to the highest cooking temperature on the bottom shelves. Keep ready-to-eat foods that need little to no cooking at all on the first fridge shelf. Then organize the rest of your shelves by cooking temperature. In this scenario, eggs would go on the third or fourth shelf, as they cook between 145 and 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Now bread. If you're a carb eater, you've certainly lost multiple packages of bread before. They are notoriously known for their super-fast expiring dates and the colonies of mold that appear from what seems to be thin air and force us to throw away otherwise good slices of bread. Well, here's some good news. There is a way to keep your loaf of bread fresh for weeks and even months. And contrary to eggs and milk, the fridge is not the way to go for that to happen. Instead, separate the slices of bread and place them in a plastic bag. Now, close the bag, removing all air from inside it. Be sure to leave the bag as free from air as possible. That is what will generate its safe storage. Now, place the airtight bags of plastic into a freezer. And voila! Your bread can last up to three months that way. How about pickles and other condiment food jars? In order to make them last longer, store them upside down, as that will prevent mold growth. And yes, you can keep these ones on your fridge's door. There's no problem with that. Before we leave the kitchen, try this out. Whenever you buy a new nonstick saucepan, season it before actually cooking anything on it. First, you'll need oil. Rub on the edges of your pan and place it inside the stove for about 60 seconds. Let it absorb the heat, then remove the pan from the stove and let it cool down. Wipe off the excess oil, and there you have it. This way, the oil will fill in any small gaps or little pores in the pan, smoothing down the surface until it's all even. You can now expose the pan to high temperatures, and it won't get damaged. Now, let's move on to bathroom items. Toilet paper is easily one of the most wasted household items. Even if we notice it, we don't really do much to change the way we go about it. Apart from the classic over-under discussion of how we should place toilet paper, there is a less-known must-do habit that we often ignore. Just to fill you in, in case you've been oblivious to this until now, toilet paper science has long debated whether the correct way to hang the roll is with the loose end draped over the top or with the loose end hanging inside next to the wall. And as much as I bet many here already know the answer, can I have a drum roll, please? Well, you got that right if you guessed with the loose end draped over the top. It is so for the simple reason that over provides easier access to the loose hanging end of the paper and minimizes the risk of knuckle-on-wall germ gathering. Ooh. 
But now, toilet paper ingenuity doesn't end here. Did you know that to reduce toilet paper waste, you should squish your rolls before placing them on the bathroom hanger? By squishing, I mean laying them down horizontally and pressing them down with your hand until their aspheric center has turned into an oval, almost flattened shape. Yes, you should aim at flattening your toilet paper. And no, I haven't lost my mind. That happened long ago. The purpose of this practice is to make it harder for toilet paper to rotate. When you hang it in its usual, more circular form, it rotates too easily. This way, it lets us, the toilet paper users, effortlessly enjoy it in an unlimited fashion. Depending on the force we use to pull the paper, we will end up with twice or three times the amount of paper we needed in the first place. And sure, we could just roll the excess back. But I bet most of us here don't do that and end up just wasting huge chunks of paper. You get the idea, right? Oval-shaped paper equals more controlled rotation and thus less waste of toilet paper. So there. Then we have razor blades. If you're the person who never stops buying razor blades because the last one you bought 5 days ago is already rusty from your bathroom's humidity, maybe you'll want to listen to this one. It's not true that razor blades have such a short life expectancy. They can and should last longer in our bathroom cupboards. We just need to know how to handle them. Now, you don't have to be an expert to know that a warm and moist environment doesn't go well with razor blade steel. So, for starters, you should always dry them after using them, especially if your last usage was in the shower. Then, keep them in a cool and dry spot, maybe even out of the bathroom. They will surely last longer this way. Using a rusty blade can be especially bad for your skin, contributing to bacterial or fungal infection. So, that's a big no-no for leaving the blade face down in a puddle of shower water. Do keep that in mind. After that delicious shower, some people may head back to their bedrooms. If it's near bedtime, they might even decide to light that aesthetically pleasant nightside candle and enjoy the most out of its pleasing white musk and warm vanilla aroma. But if your candle has been burning too quickly, try these tricks out and see if it'll last longer. You can trim your candle's wick multiple times and keep it as far away from water and moist as possible. It will guarantee that your candle's wax stays firm and steady and thus continues to burn slower for a longer period of time. A little extra tip regarding candles. Never throw away their jars once you finally burnt them out. Suppose you made it to the end of your candle. Congrats! Boil some water, wash the recipient with detergent and warm water, clean the remaining wax out of it, and reuse the jar. You can plant a succulent, store art supply, or use it for anything your heart desires. And there you have it. Little changes in habits can go a long way in your daily life. Be sure to check them out and let us know in the comments below which one was your favorite to try out. Me? I'm going to make candles out of toilet paper. We'll see how that goes. This is the right way to use a hairbrush. Don't use it horizontally. Hold it in a vertical position. The bristles are lined up vertically. If you hold the comb horizontally, then these bristles begin to bend. You can check it yourself and feel how convenient it is this way. You enter the room and take off your sunglasses. Where are you going to hide them? Are you going to hold them in your hand or hang the glasses on your shirt collar? Or maybe put them in your pocket? The best way is to put the glasses in the breast pocket so the lenses look inside and only one temple sticks out. Your glasses will be protected from damage this way. According to the rules of etiquette, you must always let out those who are leaving the room, building, or elevator first, only then enter. This simple rule helps to avoid collisions and awkward situations. Do you have paint rollers in your house? Let's say you're doing repairs and painting walls. See how a thick layer of paint gets on the roller? People clean it in different ways. Someone washes it off with water or scrapes the paint off with a knife or paper. But there is an easier way. You can buy special squeegees for paint rollers. Their blade shape fits the roller perfectly and scrapes off all the dirt. Toothpicks are always on the table at restaurants and cafes. People use them incorrectly when picking their teeth with them after eating. The correct and cultured way is to go into the restroom and carefully pull out all the food. 
You don't have to tear off the cover layer from the dishwasher tablet. This layer is tiny. Just put it in the tank and the water will dissolve the cover. You know this feeling of happiness when you're hungry and find some pizza in the fridge? How are you going to reheat it? You can use a microwave or an oven, but there is a great alternative way. Heat a frying pan and put a piece of pizza on the side of it. Add a little water to the opposite side, then cover the pan with a lid or a foil. Be careful here. After a couple of minutes, take it out and taste the pizza. It's perfect, right? Don't brush your teeth with an electric toothbrush using fast movements. This device should move back and forth smoothly. These shoulder straps with buttons on your jacket have a purpose. They were invented to keep your backpack straps tightly on your shoulders, preventing them from slipping off. Try it yourself. Unhook the straps, put on the backpack, and attach them back. Keep the box with the hole up when you're pouring juice or milk out of it. Then, there'll be less splashing. Always put the toilet lid down before flushing it. Small, imperceptible particles of dirty water splash and pollute the entire space when you keep it open. Many people have a seasoning shaker in their kitchen, and most just shake it to pour spices on food. If you're one of them, stop right there. Just flip it over and scroll the top cover with holes. Spices will easily fall out without any obstacles. Do you have bad breath? How are you going to check it? You can breathe on the palm and feel it, but this method is not effective. It's much better to lick your wrist. Don't touch it with the tongue tip. Lick it with the middle part. Smell it and yeah, that's what people get when you're talking to them. One of the ways to keep your breath fresh is to stay silent. When you talk a lot, your mouth dries up. Without moistening with saliva, many bacteria accumulate in it. And this is what gives you bad breath. There's an empty space between the panes and the oven door. You can stick a brush in there to clean the window. The entrance to this space is at the bottom of the door. Open the lower shelf, then push the brush through the hole. There are many ways to separate the yolk from the white in a raw egg. You can use special spoons or do it with a bottle. Someone slowly pours egg white from the shell. None of the methods are easy, especially if you're doing it for the first time. But you can extract the yolk much more efficiently without using any additional equipment. Just pour the raw egg onto a plate and take out the yolk with your own hands. But before that, oil your fingers with garlic. Did you know that it's better to wash the rice in cold water before cooking it? Water helps to separate the dry grains from each other. During cooking, the washed rice grains don't stick together. This makes the rice fluffy and delicious. The easiest way to peel garlic is to put it in the microwave. Cut off the tip and leave it in the microwave for 20 to 30 seconds. Done! You can peel it easily now. Do you know how to properly open a pack of spaghetti? Take it with both hands. Hold it upright and hit the bottom part against the table. Don't be afraid to use force. The lower side of the pack should evenly touch the table surface. A slight deviation can damage your spaghetti. You can also open it by strongly slapping its back with your palm. But this option requires more practice. It turns out that you don't really have to wrap your suitcase with a protective plastic film while traveling. You can use a t-shirt instead. Just put your clothes on your suitcase as a cover. And don't waste your time and money wrapping it in plastic. Here's the right way to tie a garbage bag to get rid of the hole in the middle. Don't tie these thin straps together. Hold them to the top. Make a knot and wrap the knot through the loop. Now you have a good tight seal here. Here's the best way to open a bag of chips at a party. Put the bag horizontally. Fold two corners on the same side and roll this side inside a little bit. Put the bag with this rolled side on the table and open the top. Your ceiling fan has two modes of operation, the winter and the summer one. You need to find the switch to change between them. Switch it up to activate the winter mode and the fan will pull the air up. Turn on the summer mode and the fan will push the air down to cool the room. If you're afraid of losing your luggage at the airport, here's a great way to avoid it. You need to take a picture of your suitcase in advance 
to show it to the airport staff later. You can also buy a special GPS tracker and put it in your bag. It can work for six days. You can use your phone to locate your luggage wherever it is. The extra space under your oven is not only for keeping your frying pans and pots. You can put dishes with food in there. The oven heat will keep the food warm. It's helpful if you're waiting for guests and they're late. Don't tuck the bathrobe belt behind the back. Pull it out and thread it through loops on the side of your stomach. After that, tie the belt as you like. The robe will fit tightly to the body. You get a hot pack of popcorn out of the microwave and feel that small unpopped grains are in there. You can get rid of them before you open the box. See that tiny hole in the top? Shake it over a plate and all the grains will fall through it. Have you ever found pieces of fabric coming with new clothes? They're not patches. These are the first test subjects before cleaning. You can put this piece in the washing machine and see what will happen to it. If everything's okay, you can safely wash your clothes. Here's an easy way to peel an orange. Just cut off its top and bottom and make an incision down to the middle. Now unroll the fruit. You can open cardboard containers with Chinese food by expanding paper walls and using them as a plate. This way, you'll get more space and cool down your food faster. Having the right temperature in your home will drastically improve your mood. Too hot, you'll become irritable and frustrated. Too cold, and the chances are that you'll be too demotivated and sluggish. <laughs> Set that temperature to 77 degrees to make sure you feel good throughout the day. At night, we work better with slightly lower temperatures. 60 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit is the perfect temperature to get that much-needed rest. As good-looking as you are, hmm, staring at yourself in the mirror for too long can cause a lot of stress. Do you find that you focus on various body flaws, no matter how small, and constantly check your reflection in the mirror? Unless you're a vampire. You could replace it with a smaller one that could stop you from gazing at yourself for too long. Get organized and spend a few minutes of your leisure time organizing your surroundings. Taking 5 minutes to work on one area of your house, like decluttering that desk, and you'll be surprised at how much your quality of life will increase. Your clean surroundings will give you peace of mind, and cleaning itself will help you develop healthy habits. These habits can make sure you feel in control of your actions and the direction of your life. Procrastination can be a slippery slope. Once it starts, it's hard to break out. An easy start is to create a list of all the things that you've been avoiding. Then, commit to spending just a few minutes doing one of those things. Even if you don't complete it, this is a fantastic way to move forward. Before long, you'll feel better just by crossing things off that list. Wear your favorite outfit every once in a while, even if you're not going anywhere. Putting on some of your best clothes will make you feel good about yourself instantly. There's no need for a special occasion. Make yourself feel happier now. You could even head out to lunch or take a trip to the mall in them. Now, everything has a place in your home. If it doesn't, why is it there? If you've taken it out, put it back. If you've opened it, close it. If you put it down, pick it up. If you've taken it off, hang it back up. Live by these simple rules and you'll see a profound difference in your home. Everything will be tidier, and you'll reduce your chores by doing small things before they become a bigger problem. Use or gift any items that are for special occasions. They're just using up space. If you've got a special perfume that's been sitting there unused, or a set of beautiful dishes collecting dust in a box, you're putting off life. Enjoy it right now, in the moment, is more precious than we think. Take the chance and use those things now. If it isn't too well used, you could even give it to a friend or family member to make their day. Keeping a journal to jot down what you're thankful for every day will make you happier, increase your productivity, and help you sleep much better. Creating and repeating positive affirmations that acknowledge the progress you're making to improve your life is a great way to bring about some balance. It's a great way to show your gratitude for the small things and gain more of an appreciation for life. It's always more fun to be positive than it is to be negative. Set your alarm a little bit earlier every day. 
If you usually set your alarm for 7 a.m., set it back 5 minutes every day until you find that perfect time. That'll give you the extra time in the morning to exercise, meditate, read, plan your day, or work on something that you're passionate about. It might not seem like a lot, but those minutes are the difference between a rush and a relaxing start to the day. Having a little extra time in your day will help you feel less forgetful, a lot more productive, and happier. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. This valuable piece of advice couldn't be more true. Making your bed when you wake up will change your mindset for the entire day. Your productivity will skyrocket. Once you've done one task, you'll want to do more and more letting them snowball to a fulfilling and successful day. If you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. Try yoga in the morning. Yoga is unbelievably healthy for you. It'll make you strong and lean, but also works on other areas like flexibility and balance. Plus, it's very relaxing and can be done in the comfort of your own home. Just put down a towel or get a mat and let that stress leave you for the day. Having your dog or cat sleeping in bed with you might be cute and comforting, but there can be more cons than pros. Allergies, disruption of sleep, dirt, and hair can negatively affect our ability to rest and recover. This can easily lead to irritability, raised stress levels, and nasty sniffles. Better to get a separate bed for your furry friend and use the day to cuddle with them. Most people have had the experience of putting something down on a table just for now and looking back weeks later, only to see a massive pile of random items that belong somewhere else. Start by organizing it into piles, deal with what's there, and then give it a good wipe down. It's going to feel so good to walk into the room and just see a clean space instead of all that accumulated rubbish. Make sure it stays nice and clean by always putting things back where they belong. Even if it won't stay this way, it looks good for the moment, at least. Keep your front doors clean. It almost seems too simple a matter, but it does. Coming home to a clean door creates a positive feeling the second you arrive. You'll feel more relaxed and ready to settle down for the evening. Giving the front of your house a little care also helps you feel proud of your home and puts you at ease in case of any unexpected visitors. You can change the entire feel of a room with a simple bit of decoration. Sometimes an empty wall is just crying out for a little something. Look for the perfect piece of art, photograph, or even one of your own paintings to fill the space. Whatever it is, hang it up to improve the area. Adding some life to an empty space feels good, makes us smile, and fills our home with more character. Call at least one friend or family member a week. You can do this while you clean, walk the dog, or just while you're relaxing at home. Humans are naturally social. Even when we don't feel like it, socializing with our loved ones makes us feel better. This is even true if we're naturally introverted. Doing this will also make the other person feel better. So it's great all around. Put on some great music to set the feeling you want at that moment. It doesn't matter what you put on. Music is fantastic for changing your mood. So find something that fits how you want to feel. If you're looking to relax, put something slow or acoustic on. If you feel down, play something upbeat. Either way, use music to transform your home. Some people feel better when they let go of some of their physical possessions. That doesn't mean you should live in an empty house, but there's no need for a lot of things we accumulate over time. The latest home styles don't matter at all if they don't make you feel happy right now. It's all about how objects make you feel. If something brings you satisfaction, even if it's something small like a trophy from high school, you should keep it. One way to feel happier in your space is to bring in a little bit of nature. Houseplants have the added benefit of helping to refresh the air in a room, making you healthier and bringing a smile to your face. The need to care for the plant by watering and pruning it can also build some really positive habits. Plants are a great idea all around. Clean floral smells can positively affect our mood, so use oils or candles if you want to relieve the stress from your day. Lavender helps people fall asleep, which is great for nighttime. Keeping some lemon next to you while you work can make you feel more positive and awake. Now, don't go overboard with the scents, though. Any smell in too great a concentration can cause more stress and headaches. 
the complete opposite of what you want. Owning a pet is thought to have health benefits. It'll improve your general mood, but can even do things like lower your blood pressure. Having a pet dog will lead to a healthier and happier you because of their need to be taken for regular walks and playtime. Pets can also help relieve your stress and anxiety by promoting laughter and affectionate behavior. (laughs) Just ask any cat owner. You can make any space feel like home with some well-placed lights. Light bulbs with shades of white or yellow can promote relaxation and make your room feel more alive. Candles and dimmer lights bring a nice amount of warmth to any room you put them in for that cozy feeling. It's not always possible to put yourself first, but don't forget that you deserve to be treated well too. Waiting for others to treat you well can be worse, as it might never happen. Make some time to just treat yourself every now and then. Read a good book, go for a walk, or enjoy that special chocolate you have. Yeah, chocolate. Never forget to put yourself first. Spending up to 12 hours a day on devices like TVs, smartphones, and video games can be exhausting. TV and streaming alone can take 4 hours away from your day. You might be thinking you're relaxing after a hard day, but depending on what you're watching, it can cause more stress and anxiety. Watching a little bit less will free you up to follow other exciting things. Making this change won't just have a positive impact on your free time, but also on your general health. Here's an easy way to set yourself up for a productive day. Get your clothes ready for everything. Want to run after work? Take the clothes out in the morning to motivate you more. Having to get ready for a run can demotivate you to the point where you don't do it. Getting everything ready will make sure you always get things done, even if you're not in a good mood. As well as this, planning in advance will always make sure your mornings feel more peaceful and less rushed because you'll have already decided on your outfit for the day. Now, get out there and make it happen! So, making a mistake with a pencil is easy to fix. You just use the pink side, right? And with ink, you just flip the eraser and use the blue part. Wrong! And you just wrecked a perfectly good piece of paper. That's because the blue part is actually also for pencil. Mind blown! The blue side of the eraser is for erasing mistakes on thicker paper, where the softer pink side just can't get the job done. A vegetable peeler isn't just for potatoes or carrots. You can use it to shave off thin slices of onion. Hey, I just saved you time, stress, and a whole bunch of tears. It's also good for cutting perfect thin slices of cheese. Everything is better with cheese. The diagonal leather patch on backpacks isn't just for decoration, it's there to hold your nasty shoes. Backpacks are made for the outdoors, with pockets to hold water bottles, pens, maps, coins, and maybe even tiny dogs. So it makes sense to tie up your muddy shoes on the outside of your bag. Placing a wooden spoon across the top of a pot of pasta can stop it from turning into a volcano situation. The bubbles get all confused when they come into contact with the spoon's water-repelling surface, and they retreat back into the pot, victory! Less mess and more pasta! If you're pre-rinsing your dishes like you were told to, you might be getting worse results from your dishwasher. Most modern dishwashers have sensors inside them to sense how dirty your plates are. Then they unleash a controlled jet of water to get all of that stuff off. Scrape any solid food into your compost bin and stack them up properly. Let the dishwasher do the hard work. Dropping an open juice box can turn a relaxing Sunday into a day of cleaning up a sticky mess. The manufacturers know how you feel and how clumsy you can be. That's why they put little handles on the cartons. Flip up the flaps at the top of the juice box. Okay, now you can totally space out. Blenders are designed to have the liquids put in first. To make the perfect smoothie, add your milk, coconut water, yogurt, or whatever you use in first, then your berries and spinach and whatever. You can thank me later. (laughs) You're welcome. Ever pull the foil lid off a pudding or one of those mini applesauce things and realize you don't have a spoon with you? Don't worry, there's a trick for that hidden in the foil. Give it a little fold, and it's good to go. 
Now, it's not really a spoon, more of a mini shovel, but it gets the job done. Or you can use your fingers instead. No. No more sacrificing your fingernail on that keyring your friend got you in Cabo. For a frustration-free way to add a new key to your ring, grab a staple remover and wedge its teeth between the coils. Create even more space by pressing down. Now, there's no need to cry over spilled milk. Pouring milk out of a carton can sometimes lead to messy accidents. Unless you use this simple trick, turn the carton around and pour it out that way. What? It may seem weird, but once you try it, you'll never go back. Have you ever tried to pull out a square of plastic wrap only to have the whole roll jump out of the box in excitement? Not anymore. There's little cardboard tabs on the sides to hold the tube in place, making it easy to glide the film out. Just push them in and never be frustrated again. Never! Using a plunger on a clogged kitchen sink or toilet can be annoying. But have you really got the right tool for the job? One is the standard bowl-shaped rubber head. This is perfect for flat surfaces like a sink or a tub. The other one has a narrower head on it, specifically designed for toilet pipes. Having a cold drink on a hot summer's day is so refreshing. But what do you do if your soda bottle is still warm? Cry? The always handy paper towel is here to save the day. With the towel, wrap it around the bottle and place it in the freezer for 15 to 20 minutes. Presto! A nice cold beverage! When you look at a check and see MP near the signature line, it means the check printer used microprint as an extra security feature. To the untrained eye, it looks like a normal line. Tricky stuff. Elevators have many tricks up their sleeves. Not that they actually wear coats or anything. Pressing the floor button twice to turn it off, holding the closed door button and your floor together to get an express ride, does that actually work? But what about that secret hole in the outside door? Is someone looking in on your bored, resting elevator face? As cool as that would be, it's only for maintenance people to open the elevator and fix any problems. Cutting cherry tomatoes can be extremely boring, one tomato at a time. Surely, there's a quicker way to do this. Well, try placing a bunch of them between two plates. Slice in between and enjoy perfectly cut cherry tomato halves. The colored tags used to seal bread tell you which day of the week the bread was baked on. Who would have guessed? The coating makes it easier for shops to remove older loaves from the shelves. But bread tags can do more than keep your favorite loaf sealed. Grabbing the right cord from behind the TV is all about luck. Until now. Use the old bread tags as indicators to quickly find the cord you want. Look at some of those loose coins in your jar by the door. Notice those ridges? Back in the 18th century, people would file coins down, round up the shavings, and mint their own coins later. To stop this, the U.S. Mint decided to put ridges on the coins to show if they've been tampered with. Now, it's just tradition. The indent at the bottom of wine bottles is called a punt. The punt makes the wine bottle stronger, so if they're dropped, the cork won't fly across the room with all that pressure. Now, takeaway sodas have a built-in coaster. Where, you might ask? The lid, of course. Place the lid down on a table under your drink to avoid any of those annoying condensation rings. Wooden hangers aren't just great for the environment, they'll save your clothes, too. If you have pine or cedar hangers laying around, keep them in the closet with all the others. The secret behind wooden hangers is that they'll keep moths off your clothes and make them smell fresh, too. Only a few people know the secret of getting your to-go ketchup out of the bottle without wasting any. So tap that number 57 sweet spot to get a perfect, what's the word, dollop? Don't waste your strawberries by cutting off the top. Use a straw and push through from the bottom of the strawberry. Now enjoy a tasty cylinder of strawberry goodness. Just don't eat the leaves. The brushes on the sides of escalators aren't for cleaning your shoes. But they do do a great job. 
The nylon brushes stop us from getting caught on the side of the escalator by tickling our ankles. Interesting trick. Many screwdrivers can be used with a wrench to create more torque. Just place the wrench over the handle of the screwdriver and you'll use a lot less force than you would have before. It also makes it easier to get to those hard-to-reach areas. Flip any Tupperware container over and you'll likely see a few symbols. These are to show you if they're dishwasher safe, if they can be microwaved or frozen, and how to recycle them. So it turns out we've been opening bananas wrong for way too long. Instead of opening up at the stem, turn them upside down and peel from the bottom. It opens much easier that way. That's how monkeys eat them. So how do we get it so wrong? Analog watches can do much more than tell time. If you need to step away from your computer a bunch of times but don't want to have to keep logging back in, place your mouse over the top of your analog watch. The mouse will read the ticking second hand and keep your computer screen from turning black. Extension cords can easily frustrate anyone. Just as you start getting into a rhythm, the power cuts out. The best way to avoid this is simple. Builders use this trick all the time. Tie the ends together and they'll never disconnect again. Keychain bottle openers aren't just for kids, you know. On the underside, there's a thing you can use to open a can as well. This works especially well if you don't have nails or don't want them broken. Back in the day, pizza for dinner was like winning the lottery, only with more cheese. But did you ever notice that plastic stopper in the middle of the box, stopping the lid from touching the pizza? It also has another use. Use this little stopper to hold down the slice next to yours when you're getting it out of the box. Yeah, you can thank me later. That square of fabric isn't meant for repairing holes in your clothing. Although, might as well keep it just in case. It's actually a tester for your washing machine and detergent. If the fabric square comes out of the cycle okay, then wash away. But be honest, how many people do you think have really ever done this? I'm guessing not many. You just spent the entire morning running errands up and down the street and you finally stop to treat yourself to a cup of coffee. You enter the nearest coffee shop, place your order, and notice that actually, you really need to use the bathroom. It's a regular-looking public one with multiple stalls. As you pick yours, the one in the middle, you get inside and your mind starts to wander. Why on earth do bathroom doors have a half-inch gap between the door and the lock? And why on earth do they have a huge gap between the door and the floor? Can we have a drum roll for this moment, please? Well, my friend, there is not only one specific reason why public bathroom doors have so many gaps in them, but rather several. Public toilets are designed to make people spend as little time there as possible. You aren't supposed to feel comfortable or at home. So the design would have to reflect this notion. Here come the gaps. In some bathrooms, gaps are so big that users may even feel self-conscious about doing their business out of preoccupation that the rest of the people standing in line will see them. Then there's the matter of pricing. Making custom doors can be a heavy burden for the people building public toilets. This would mean understanding exact measurements so that doors would always fit the mold of the stalls it's supposed to be installed into. Now, not all the gaps in public bathrooms are necessarily the same size. They may vary, even if this variation is small and often unnoticeable. So these gaps actually help to reduce the margins of errors and to turn production more cost-effective for the people financing them. In case a door comes wider or more narrow than it should, the gap regulates the differences and allows for their installation anyway. There is also the case of air circulation. The last thing you want to do in a public bathroom is to trap odors. So you need a little space under and between the doors to allow the air to flow. Finally, the gaps are a big safety measure. It can always allow for people on the outside to see if someone inside a stall isn't feeling too okay and maybe needs some help. And what about that extra hole in the upper part of the sink? It has a name and everything. The overflow hole. And it's designed to keep the sink from flooding. So, in case someone forgets and keeps the faucet going for too long, or the sink gets clogged and water can't drain down from the main drain hole, the overflow hole comes in to save the day. 
let's say it buys you a little time before you have the entire bathroom floor flooded. Have you ever noticed how satisfying closing the door of a car can be? Car manufacturers devote a great deal of time to designing these sounds. Studies have shown that they create a perceived sense of quality in the buyer. It all begins with the primary material. While older cars used to be made with heavier materials, car doors nowadays are produced with lighter tin, which can make a rather unpleasant metallic sound once you shut them closed. So car companies employ sound engineers to ensure that there is the exact amount of foam, mats, and tin in a car's composition to make the most comforting sound possible. And what about those tiny dots on the top of your car's front window? The pattern of these little black dots minimizes distractions for your eyes. This black part, also known as frit, normally gets warmer than the clear parts, which prevents the windshield from deforming. And no, the tab under your rearview mirror is not made only for the purpose of hanging fluffy dice or aromatic-pleasing air fresheners. It's actually a switch that allows you to adjust the position of the mirror depending on the time of day. Flip it one way, and it's the daytime driving mode. Flip the other, and you're ready to drive safely during nighttime as it tones down the glare coming from headlights of the cars behind you. Next time you head out to the supermarket, make sure to keep this in mind. In case you don't have a coin to unlock these shopping carts, there is a well-kept secret that can help you out. If you have your house keys on you, check for a rounded key head. If you happen to find one, try using it to unlock the cart. It should fit perfectly in there, replacing the need to carry coins around. Because if we're being honest, who still has them? Elevators. If you want to ride them on your terms and your terms only, make sure to try something out. Most elevators have a secret button combination you can use to skip all the other selected floors and go directly to the one of your choosing. This might work out, especially on those days when you've pressed 13, but you wanted to press 33. On most elevators, this works once you simultaneously press the closed door button together with your floor number. This should help you get to your floor without stopping. Some elevators require you to double-press the selected floor numbers, as double-pressing will often cancel the previously made request, while other elevators require you to hold the open door button and then double-press the buttons of the floors you'd like to cancel. Now, to stay out of trouble, it's best not to cancel the floors of the other people in the elevator. They won't take it kindly. Also keep in mind that there are elevators that might not have this function. Now, for honey lovers out there, go ahead and raise your hand. If your pot of golden honey is crystallized, know that it is actually a good sign. Crystallized honey means that it hasn't been pasteurized, which means better product quality. With a decrease in temperature, the natural ingredient of honey, also known as glucose, will make it crystallize. Now, try making the best of it. To add some texture to your oatmeal or toast, add a layer of crystallized honey and enjoy nature's sugar. And if you don't like crystallized honey, plop it in the microwave for a minute or two. Ah, winter and fall. You know what this means, right? Sweater weather. But there's nothing more annoying than wearing your beautiful wool sweater and itching yourself all the way through it. Actually, I can be more annoying than that, but let's talk about itchy sweaters. To keep this from happening again, here's the secret. Turn your sweater inside out and soak it in cold water. Add 2 or 3 tablespoons of vinegar and let it sit for a while. Then, drain the water. Now, while the sweater is still wet, massage a generous amount of hair conditioner into the fibers of the wool. After letting it soak in the hair conditioner for about 30 minutes, gently press the excess water out of the wool and leave it to dry flat on a towel. There you go! No more itchy sweater! Any fast food restaurant you go to will hand out small paper cups for customers to fill with their ketchup, mustard, or barbecue sauce. But if you're eating some chicken nuggets or trying to dip your burger into the cup, there's always that bit of sauce that seems impossible to reach. Next time, try unfolding the cup. It'll turn into a small paper plate, and this way, you'll get all the ketchup you poured in the first place. Padlocks used in outdoor environments should be clean and lubricated every three months. Regular lubrication will help prevent padlocks from freezing in cold weather conditions. Look for the tiny hole on the bottom of the lock. Then pour oil into it, and there you go! It opens again. One thing we often neglect is a point in an ointment cap. 
These pointy surfaces were designed to help us break the tinfoil protection of the ointment tube. You just turn the cap over and break the ointment seal with its own cap, and there you go. After a long day of work, all you really need to do is a bubble bath. You turn on the hot water and let it run for a few minutes. You might even light a candle and pour some essential oils into the water. Then, in comes the liquid soap. You stir the water until the entire surface of the tub water is crammed with bubbles and make your way in. The bubbles in a bubble bath have a fundamental primary function. Their job is to preserve the water's temperature, just so you can have warm water for longer. Do you have sweaty feet? Weird question, I know. But if you're one of these people, here's some good news. All is not lost. Try putting a dry tea bag inside your shoes and storing it in a dry place for a while. The tea bags will absorb the humidity and the smell off the soles of your shoes. So here I am thinking, shouldn't we have learned these things in school? Well, either way, if you learned something new today, make sure to tell us about it in the comments below. Next time you follow a recipe where you need to separate egg yolks from whites, try this. Peel a clove of garlic and rub your fingers with it. Carefully break an egg into a bowl. With your garlicky fingers, pick up the yolk. And voila, you can now marvel at how perfectly it separates from the egg white. If it's egg peeling time, there are two easy ways to do it. When cooking eggs, add a teaspoon of baking soda to the boiling water. This will make peeling eggs much easier. You can also place them under cold running water as soon as they're ready. The eggshells will come off much easier, and you won't burn your hands while peeling the eggs. The sides of roads have sleeper lines for a very important reason. Their main function is to alert those drivers who doze off behind the wheel. When a car starts steering off the road, the tires go over the lines, and the sound wakes the driver up. Those price tags and labels that come glued to your Tupperware are easier to remove than you might think. No need to waste hot water and soap trying to remove them. Take a hair dryer instead. Blow some hot air directly onto the tag for a minute or so. There you go, the label comes off at once. White household appliances might get yellow with time. To make them white again, use this simple trick. Apply bleaching cream to the surface of an item. Wrap it in plastic and let it stay this way overnight. The next morning, check it out. It'll be as white as when you first bought it. When you buy a pack of cans, opening it might turn into a problem. You probably tear a hole in the plastic and try to squeeze a can out of there. But the bottom of cans was actually designed to make this part much easier. Grab a can and rub it over the top of another can from the pack. A circle the exact same size of the can will be cut out. This way, you can easily remove the new can from the pack without destroying the entire thing. Now to the art of lime squeezing. When you pick limes at the grocery store, you never know how juicy they are. And often, when you bring them home and squeeze them, almost no juice comes out. Try heating these citruses in a microwave for 30 seconds before cutting them open. You'll see that the juice will come out much easier. But be careful, they're going to be hot and you don't want to burn your hands. If you're hanging out with your friends and feel like listening to some music but don't have a loudspeaker, there's no need to worry. Place your phone in a cup or bowl. The sound will get louder instantly. If you don't have a hanger at hand but still need to hang your shirt, this trick is for you. Most dress shirts have a tiny loop on the back between the shoulders, and you can use it to hang your shirt. How about the worst case scenario? Your phone is running out of battery and you're running late. Try this simple trick. Switch on airplane mode. Your phone will charge to 100% in no time. You can run the sticky part of a post-it note along your laptop's keyboard. This will help remove tiny bits of food and dust that get stuck in between the keys. Avoid putting really hot food into plastic containers. Hot plastic releases all kinds of toxic chemicals, and we don't want our food to absorb that nasty stuff, right? What can be better than a bubble bath in the evening? But the bubbles are not only pretty and smell nice, they also keep the water temperature hot for longer. 
This way, you can enjoy a long, hot bath without getting cold too quickly. You got home craving a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but your peanut butter now has two layers, and the oil is at the top. To avoid getting disappointed, next time, store a peanut butter jar turned upside down. Your screwdriver and wrench can work together to remove that stubborn screw. Grab your screwdriver's handle with the wrench and use it to apply more force. This method will also help you reach more difficult areas. There is a reason why your coffee stirrer looks like a straw. It has holes in it because it reduces the amount of plastic manufacturers have to use. Plus, they prevent the stirrer from floating. The holes in the stirrer get filled with coffee, which in turn makes it heavier. And speaking of coffee, you should never buy the product that is more than 18 months old. Make sure to look at the best before date when buying it. If you've ever had trouble with those classic salt and pepper shakers, the ones you may see in diners, I've got a trick for you. Instead of shaking your entire arm to try and get some salt out of the container, try rubbing the bottom of one container with the bottom of the other. Grab the salt and hold it so that the bottom of the container faces downward. Now, while holding the pepper shaker upright, rub the two bottom parts together, creating circular friction between them. After this, the salt will spill effortlessly. After a long day of hiking, your shoes might smell funny. Well, I've got good news for you. Put dry tea bags inside your shoes and keep them in a dry place for a while. The tea bags will absorb bad smells and make your shoes dry. If you've torn your flip-flop while taking a walk, there's a way to save the day, but only if you have a bread clip with you. First, push the strap back into its hole. Then attach the bread clip to the bottom of the flip-flop strap. Here you go! Your body needs a daily amount of vitamin C to boost your immune system, but oranges are a tricky fruit to peel. To avoid getting sprayed all over your face, start by cutting off both the top and the bottom parts of the orange. Then, cut the peel vertically. Hook your fingers under the opposite sides of the cut and open your orange. If it's difficult for you to figure out how much detergent you need to wash your clothes, here's a tip for you. Usually, detergent caps have markings that indicate the exact amount of liquid you should use per wash. It helps your detergent last longer. Permanent markers are not as permanent as you might believe they are. I can prove it. Let's say you used a permanent marker, thinking it was a regular one, to draw something on a whiteboard. Good news for you, you don't need to throw the board away yet. There's a way to save it. Get a regular marker and use it to draw over the lines left by the permanent one. Let it sit for a while so that both markers blend in together. The thing is, the ink of the regular marker contains a solvent that dissolves the pigment the permanent marker contains. Now take a paper towel and rub the whiteboard clean the marker will come off easily. If you need to peel peaches, use the technique called blanching. First, heat up some water. Wait until it starts boiling. Soak the peaches in the water for about 20 seconds. Then put the fruit into a bowl with cold water and leave them for about five minutes. There you have it. The peel will come off nicely and easily. That plastic lid covering your drink can be used as a coaster. Take the lid off and put it on the table. The bottom of your cup will fit perfectly into the lid's inner ring. No more stained tables from now on. Bristles on escalators are there for safety reasons. They remain stationary while the escalator is moving, preventing people from standing too close to the sides. This helps to avoid accidents like getting your shoelaces stuck. If you pay close attention to elevator doors, you'll notice they have a small hole in them. This is a keyhole, and only authorized personnel have the key to it. They use it in emergency situations or during a regular maintenance routine. Want to play a game? Can you count how many technical gadgets you use during your day? Don't forget to count your router, lint remover, and every light bulb. Well, five, seven, maybe 15? Studies claim that the average household in the USA currently owns around 25 electronic devices. In 2019, this number was more than half lower. The modern speed of life makes it so easy to forget that our everyday essentials have history. Let's do some time travel to refresh our memory. 
Chances are you'll never take your toilet paper for granted again. You wake up to the annoying sound of an alarm clock. This is how it looked like 1,000 years ago. Just kidding, it's a rooster. These birds did a great job helping people wake up at dawn before an American named Levi Hutchins invented the first alarm clock in 1787. But this device could only ring at 4 a.m. It took mankind 60 more years to create a technology allowing us to set the alarm time manually and around 170 more years to invent an alarm that wakes you up with your favorite aromas. And now it's time to brush your teeth. Which toothbrush would you rather choose? The first one is actually a vintage shoe brush. You should probably choose this sophisticated gold-plated tool. In fact, it's a toothbrush made for Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte between 1790 and 1821. But, of course, people realized that their teeth needed care much earlier. Ancient Egyptians used branches with frayed ends to rub against their teeth. And the first bristle toothbrushes date back to 1498. Chinese craftsmen manufactured bristles from hog hairs. 360 years later, in 1857, American inventor H. N. Wadsworth patented the prototype of the modern toothbrush. And the first electric toothbrushes popped up in stores in 1960. You've just washed your hair. Time to do some styling. Would you risk putting your head inside this vintage hair dryer? A stationary hair dryer was invented in 1890 in France. Although it looks pretty claustrophobic, it was very popular in beauty salons before the era of portable hair dryers came over. Let's move on to the toilet. How about using a stone instead of toilet paper? In ancient times, people chose various materials to clean up, including leaves, grass, animal furs, water, seashells, and even stones. Rumor has it that ancient Greeks preferred using ceramics with their enemies' names. And in 1857, an American named Josen Gaetti first marketed the modern toilet paper. He called it simply, medicated paper for the water closet. The paper was sold in packages of 500 sheets for 50 cents, which is worth $17 in today's money. And this is what your flush toilet would look like if you lived in 1592. Sir John Harrington, godson of Elizabeth I, created this masterpiece in England. It's basically a water closet with a raised cistern and a small downpipe through which water runs and flushes the waste. Time to cook some breakfast. These old kitchen stoves are no more than wood-burning cook stoves. But as the age of invention took place, stoves evolved to fit modern homes. Gas stoves first appeared in 1826, and in 100 years, they were used in most domestic kitchens. And now, let's boil some water to make tea. Before the 19th century, most kettles were made of iron. People placed them directly on the flame. That's why such kettles needed constant cleaning. Mesopotamian tea lovers made their kettles from bronze, and it took an effort to make all these sophisticated decorations. But the first electric kettle appeared only in 1891 in the USA. It took about 12 minutes to boil water because the water and the heating elements were placed in separate chambers. Luckily, the modern kettles do it in a blink of an eye. Well, now, can you guess what this device is for? Nope, it's not a sewing machine. It's an electric toaster. This is what it looked like in 1893 when it was first invented in Scotland. Nowadays, toasters look more aesthetically pleasing and take less space. Speaking of space, the first hard disk was the size of a cupboard and its storage was only 5 megabytes. But today, we have 32 gigabyte disks that are used in cameras and mobile phones. Just imagine how much information you could fit in a cupboard if you could fill it fully with such disks. The correct answer is a lot. Your friend is calling. Pick up the phone. But get straight to the point. It only has about 20 minutes of battery life. This massive tool is the world's first mobile phone made by Motorola in 1973. It weighs 2.5 pounds and costs $4,000, which is around $27,000 in today's money. Time to get dressed for work. 
Would you risk ironing your crispy white shirt with such a device? Well, people used to take that risk before inventing the first electric iron in 1882. And this cute creature is an antique gas-powered iron made at the beginning of the 20th century. Earlier, they just put coal in the iron to heat it up. Is it too sunny outdoors? No problem. Put on this stylish accessory. Snow goggles were invented centuries ago to protect eyes from snow blindness. And this simple item has eventually evolved into sunglasses that we use today to hide from UV light. Why is everything so blurry? Did you forget to put on your contact lenses? Today, over 150 million people worldwide use them on a daily basis. But the first guy to get this brilliant idea lived in the 16th century, and his name was Leonardo da Vinci. In 1508, he described a method of directly affecting the cornea by putting the head in a bowl of water or just wearing a water-filled glass hemisphere over the eyes. But it took people around 400 years to bring that idea to light. And meanwhile, humankind used eyeglasses. The ancient ones used to have lenses made out of quartz and metal frames. Of course, their design was too heavy to be considered fashionable. But thankfully, today we enjoy a wide variety of frames in different styles and designs with glass or plastic lenses. It's time to hit the road. Would you mind riding this bike? That's right, it doesn't have any pedals. First bicycles didn't have a saddle, a braking mechanism, or pedals. That's why people simply called it the running machine. Also, manufacturers offered models with a bigger front wheel for higher speeds. Thankfully, speed and comfort characteristics evolved over time and continue to do so today. Take a look at this amazing rainbow. We got to take a picture immediately. Unfortunately, 40 years ago, this photo would have looked something like this. No color, no clarity. It was the time when digital cameras had just appeared. They weighed nine pounds and they could only take black and white images, but the progress is impressive. Today, it takes just one click to make a high resolution picture or video on your phone. Finally, you arrive at the office and see this mysterious device. Can you recognize its purpose? It's an old school printer. The first printing devices appeared in the 15th century in Europe, and they were way bigger and heavier than the modern ones that we use in offices and homes. Your shirt got dirty after a long day at work. Which machine would you rather choose to wash it? The right device is a wiser choice because it's electric. The left washing machine can wash up to 10 shirts, but it's only operated with a hand crank. Someone has spilled popcorn on the floor. Let's clean this up. But can you guess which of these two devices is the real vacuum cleaner? The left one. The right device is a vintage lawnmower. The first vacuum cleaners appeared in 1901, and they were petrol driven. It took a while for this device to evolve into a vacuum cleaner robot free of any tubes and wires. Just take a look at these two pictures. These devices don't even look like they're from the same planet. Most kitchen shears have metal plier-like teeth in the middle, between the handle grips. They can help you crack nuts, crab shells, and release other tough products. You can also open jars and bottles, or remove herb stems with their help. You can keep your cold meals cold and your food fresh by making a DIY ice pack. Take a sponge and fill it with water, then put it in a plastic bag and leave it in the freezer. Once the sponge is frozen, It'll stay this way for a long time. Keep in mind that you should use a watertight bag and a fresh sponge. If you turn over a Tupperware container, you'll see some symbols. They'll inform you if you can put the container in the dishwasher, if it can be microwaved or frozen. You may even find out how you can recycle the thing. Staplers actually have two modes, not just one. There's a metal plate on the lower part of the device, which helps bend the staples inward after they've pierced the paper. What many people don't know is that you can turn this plate around to switch from the staple mode to the pinning one. The pinning setting is for temporary fastening. The staples bend outward, 
making them easier to remove when necessary and damaging the paper less, too. When you take a sip from a coffee cup closed with a lid, the air pressure inside the cup drops. That's why the air from the outside tries to push into the cup. The tiny hole on the lid allows some air to enter this way, and the liquid can go out of the main hole more smoothly. It's often hard to figure out how much detergent you need to clean your laundry well, but not go overboard. Pay attention to the cap of your detergent. It usually has a marker indicating how much product you need to add to your laundry. Or there might be an instruction on the bottle. It'll let you know how to measure the detergent. You can use most screwdrivers together with a wrench to create more torque. Just place the wrench over the handle of the screwdriver. This way, you'll need to apply a lot less force than before. You'll also be able to get to hard-to-reach areas more easily. The hole in a ruler can be useful if you want to hang the device on a hook. You can also place a pencil tip in this hole if you need to draw a perfect circle. Coffee stirring sticks have holes in them because those help reduce the resistance from your drink. This way, they can stir sugar much more effectively. Such a design also makes these plastic sticks tougher and prevents them from bending in hot water. And since stirring sticks are partially hollow, less plastic is used during their production. Some boxes of chocolates have little dents in between the holes for candies. If you push such a dent, the chocolates surrounding it will pop out of their compartments. The small bumps on the F and J keys on the keyboard help people find the right keys without looking down. It's especially convenient for those who use touch typing. The rumble strips on the sides of the road are placed there to alert drivers who doze off behind the wheel. When their tires move over these strips, the noise and vibration work like an alarm clock. The black grate on a microwave is called a Faraday shield. It contains the electromagnetic energy inside the oven and protects the exterior from radiation. The grate also speeds up the heating process. Bottles have long necks so that your drink stays cool longer. Hold the neck, not the bottle itself, and your drink won't warm up. Dimples on the surface of a golf ball increase its lift and reduce air resistance. It means that the ball can go further. The dimples don't have to be spherical. They can be hexagonal or have any other shape. There's a tab on the bottom of your rearview mirror. If you push it back during nighttime driving, the headlights of the car moving behind yours won't be so blinding. If you're driving during the day, pull the tab forward. You can peel an orange more effectively if you cut into the peel at the top and bottom first. Then make a slit on one side and just pull the peel open. Headrests in cars are detachable. You can use one to break the windows if you get stuck in your vehicle. But by smashing the glass, you can easily hurt yourself. So try sliding one of the prongs in between the window pane and the door. Then pull the headrest towards yourself. The window will shatter. But hey, I'd try the door lock first. Solo cups used at barbecue parties can help you measure liquids. The bottom line equals one ounce. The second line means you've poured five ounces, and the third line means 12 ounces. Sneakers were originally invented for basketball players, and since they needed to lace their shoes in the most comfortable way, side holes were invented. Those helped players lace their sneakers in any way they liked, and they accommodate anyone's foot. Little buttons on your jeans are called rivets. They were originally placed there to prevent the seams from ripping. In the past, mostly miners and other workers wore jeans. That's why this item of clothing had to be particularly durable. And even though these days jeans aren't under such stress, the tradition of using rivets still remains. A big toothy spoon comes in handy when you need to pull your spaghetti out of the pot. And the hole in the middle of this spoon can help you measure portions. One portion equals as many dry noodles as you can fit into the hole. Sometimes, pre-rinsing dishes may lead to your dishwasher cleaning them worse than it could. Special sensors inside modern dishwashers can perceive how dirty your plates are. And after that, they send a controlled jet of water to wash all that stuff off. The only thing you're actually supposed to do 
is remove solid food from your plates and stack them up properly. Ribbed ketchup containers that they give you at fast food restaurants can get a bit bigger. Just pull the ribs outward, and your container will house much more sauce. While using a plunger on a clogged kitchen sink or toilet, make sure you've got the right tool. If it has a standard bowl-shaped rubber head, it's perfect for flat surfaces, such as a sink or a tub. But the one designed for toilet pipes has a narrower head. The hole near the rim of your bathroom sink is there to prevent overflows. Thanks to it, all excess water goes into the siphon. Plus, it helps your sink drain faster. The hole gives the air gathered in the siphon somewhere to escape. The hole in a lollipop stick can save your life. If the stick gets stuck in someone's mouth, the hole will prevent this person from choking. But the original reason for it is to simply not let the candy run off the stick. During production, the liquid treat is poured on top of the stick. The stick is hollow inside, so the candy gets inside it from both the top and the side, through that exact hole. And when it gets solid, it keeps perfectly on the plastic tube. Most padlocks have a tiny hole on the bottom. It's needed to drain water from the lock and avoid corrosion. By the way, it's the best place to lubricate a padlock. Just put a drop of oil there and the key will turn much easier. If you don't see a hole on the bottom, the lock is supposed to be used inside. Instead of opening a banana at the stem, turn it upside down and peel it from the bottom. It opens much more easily this way. A utility knife can serve you much longer than you might think. Look at the blade carefully. It's made of parallel sections. Once the knife gets blunt, you should break off the top section. You can do it with the help of the cap you'll find at the bottom of the instrument. In no time, you'll have a sharp blade again. The stripes on headphone jacks keep the wires insulated from one another. One stripe means the headset has a mono signal. Two stripes indicate you'll have stereo sound. And three stripes means the headset also has a built-in microphone. You can usually find some silica gel in bags, shoes, and many other things you buy. This gel absorbs excess moisture. Don't throw it away. Every time your shoes get wet, put some packets of silica gel inside them. It's very convenient to use bread tags to organize your cords. Just take a bread tag and several cords and clip them together. You can also write notes on these tags and use them as reminders. So, next time you head over to your local coffee shop for your morning energy booster, you may want to keep the cup lid and take it home with you. Of course, they're meant to keep the beverage hot and prevent spillage, but the lids are also designed to be used as coasters. There are ridges that are specially made on the top of the lid to help hold the base of each cup. The fact that lollipop sticks can be turned into whistles after finishing the candy is just a nice added bonus. The actual design is meant to feature that hole for another purpose altogether. Each time the candy is poured into the molds, some of it is supposed to leak into that hole, creating a tight grip to make sure the candy doesn't simply fall off. How about the tab on soda cans? Did you know it has a lesser-known purpose as well? If you prefer to enjoy your fizzy drinks through a straw, just rotate the tab and place the straw in the can through the existing hole in the can key. It helps to keep the straw in place since they can sometimes float up and slide out of the can. The people that came up with glass soda bottles also gave it a lot of thought. Not only are they cool to look at, but the narrower end of the bottleneck is the only surface you're supposed to be touching to prevent the beverage from overheating due to your own body heat. Plastic bottles also feature meticulous designs to help prevent spillage and keep carbonated sodas fizzy for as long as possible. The little object that helps with that is the soft little disc underneath the lid of a plastic bottle. You may think it useless at times, but hey, now you know! Most Greek yogurt cups come with a little something extra, like fruit, cereal, or cookie crumbs. However, the compartments in these cups are sometimes extremely narrow and hard to access. Without a tiny utensil, it can be very difficult to transfer the entire contents into the yogurt itself. Well, these yogurt cups come with a nifty design feature to help out. These small compartments are supposed to be flipped over, so you won't need to go searching for a toothpick next time you're looking for breakfast on the go. 
There's also a reason why single-serving yogurt, applesauce, or gelatin containers have packaging designs that feature a tin foil covering. Next time you peel away the lid, don't be in such a hurry to throw it away. Creasing the foil nicely can easily replace a standard utensil, like a spoon, for example. You can scrub dishes with it, line your kitchen cabinets with it, and even scare birds away around your garden with it. But most standard aluminum foil packaging comes with a feature that can easily be described as secret. If you take a closer look at the box it comes in, you'll notice there are a bunch of rounded perforations that are perfectly shaped for punching through with your finger. When you perforate this, it keeps the roll in place by way of the aluminum roll hole, and it's easier to pull it and cut it when you need a piece. You're probably using it to keep your coffee warm on your commute to work, but did you know the classic thermos was initially designed for a completely different purpose altogether? A Scottish scientist by the name of James Dewar came up with the idea, but his idea was to keep certain chemicals at a specific temperature. The system he invented featured a small bottle placed inside a larger one, with the air between the two bottles removed. The vacuum created keeps beverages hot by not allowing the heat to escape the container. Speaking of fancy packaging, we bet you noticed that your plastic milk containers sometimes feature a big round dent on the side. Let's not be so eager to judge. It's not a way for dairy producers to cheat us out of a full gallon. The specific outline for these bottles has a double purpose. It helps to absorb shock should the container ever be dropped. Hey, I didn't do it. Mm -mm. And it can provide some wiggle room in case the bottle needs to expand. If the dent has disappeared, that means the milk has gone bad. And you can figure that out without ever having to open the lid. McFlurry ice cream treats come with square-handled spoons that seem eccentric to say the least with some even considering it a waste of plastic altogether. It's there for a reason, though, and you can rest assured it's not poor design after all. When the ice cream melts to a certain degree, it's difficult to enjoy it with a spoon, so the hollow square-shaped handle can transform into a straw. That means you'll never waste a single drop of your favorite dessert. Well, here's one controversial design found in a very common snack you'll most likely find in your kitchen. I'm talking about the Ritz cracker and its dainty little edges. A TikTok user recently discovered that those scalloped edges are actually quite practical if you're looking to slice cheese so it fits on a Ritz. You just need to roll the cracker back and forth across your cheese slice of choice and voila! Perfectly shaped cheese. Some people were a little skeptical of this recent discovery, even saying that the brand simply made it up. The response appeared soon after on the Ritz TikTok account, simply reposting the video with the caption, The More You Know. While we're still discussing perfectly shaped food items, should you ever find yourself with a craving for cookies, but you don't have a cookie cutter, don't stress! Just use a vegetable can or a small water glass. It'll do just fine. If you do have a collection of cookie cutters already in your kitchen, don't limit yourself to those shapes. With just a little online research, you can figure out how to make watermelon slice-like cookies out of that moon-shaped cutter, little bumblebees out of heart shapes, and even farm animals out of flower shapes. The little indents on the bottom of most cups aren't a manufacturing defect. Apparently, they were meant to allow water to flow after the cups are placed upside down in the dishwasher. They're also meant to protect the cups from being damaged when they're filled with hot drinks, since cool air can then flow underneath. Now, when was the last time you checked your kitchen scale to see if it's still accurate? There's an easy way to do that, you know. You just need a couple of pennies. Well, nine pennies to be precise. When you place the nine pennies on the scale, they should weigh exactly one ounce. All of us are not always up for a fancy, intricate dinner. So, it's easy to have a nice, heartwarming bag of microwavable rice on hand in the kitchen that you can pair up with your main course. However, if you've struggled with steadying the bag upright in the microwave, you'll be pleased to know most of them feature some flaps on the bottom, placed there for just that reason, to create an even sturdy base. It's better for your teeth to enjoy an apple by slicing it into thin pieces, But it does become kind of tedious given how easily they oxidize. To keep peeled apples from browning, place them into a small water container with an added tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. If you've already bought some tomatoes but they're not ripe enough to use, place them near a bunch of fruit. 
pears work best for this trick, since they will help the tomatoes reach the perfect consistency for sauces in a jiffy. Now, while I'm still on the subject of helping you out with your bolognese sauce, here's a nice trick to make sure you'll never cover the entire kitchen in tomato sauce ever again. The holes on the pan handles are not just for hanging them neatly around the kitchen. They're also there to keep your cooking spoons in place while cooking. Not everyone has mastered the perfect baked potato recipe, but here are a bunch of ideas to help you out in creating your own household technique. First, start by pre-boiling the potatoes in salted water for up to 10 minutes. The heat from the water will basically preheat the vegetables, while the salt will add some flavor in advance. Second, if you don't mind more rustic-looking potatoes, don't be afraid to press them with the back of a spoon just a bit before placing them in the oven. Creating some edges on the vegetables will add some nice, delicious crispiness after baking. Lastly, before turning the oven on, mix in some spices and oils like rosemary, olive oil, thyme, goose fat, or even orange peels. Trust me, you'll never want to bake your potatoes another way again. Now, who doesn't love a nice, juicy, homemade chocolate cake? Here's a little tip that's more on the aesthetic side. To prevent the cake batter from sticking to the pan, use cocoa instead of flour to coat the inside. You'll prevent it from getting that white flour dust on it, especially if you're not looking to coat or glaze the cake. Sounds like a plan! Hey, have you ever been vibing out in your room, listening to some of your favorite songs, admiring the subwoofer of your speaker as it delivers magnificence to your eardrums? We all have! But have you ever asked yourself why that same speaker, along with other speakers across the globe, is almost always black? Some of you are probably screaming at your screen right now about your speaker being green, red, or any other color found in the rainbow. Number one, I said, almost always. And number two, if you look closely at the gorgeous design of your brightly colored music player, you'll often find that the speaker beneath it is still colored black. One possible explanation for this is that the original technology of speakers had a diaphragm with black particles on it. So as soon as a sound is amplified, it sends a charge through the diaphragm, and these black particles are driven upwards. The carbon particles bouncing and touching the upper membrane of the diaphragm are responsible for creating some of the distinct sounds from our speakers that we all love so much. Speaker manufacturers must have gotten tired of their products changing color with prolonged use, combined with these black particles settling on the upper membrane of the diaphragm. So their logical solution was to color most speakers black. Another more practical belief as to why speakers are mostly colored black is that it's a hue that easily matches up with many types of decor. Walls, furniture, and clothes all often look quite well when combined with this color, which is why it's so prevalent everywhere you go. Listening to music has repeatedly scored in the top 10 pastimes in the US based on research. Nowadays, you find sound speakers everywhere. In your television, laptop, and your phone, you can't escape them. But let's take a look at how they started off. Their origins are in radio and telephone technology. The first form of a speaker was developed by Johann Philipp Rice in 1861. The German was a self-taught inventor and installed the speaker on his telephone. It was just about able to reproduce clear tones, but it could also replicate muffled speech after a few revisions. Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, decided to try and produce an improved version of Rice's speaker. Essentially, Bell and other inventors wanted to make an electrodynamic speaker. By 1877, it was still yet to exist. But due to the desire of inventors worldwide to change this, research confirmed that it was extremely possible to make one. In particular, the work of Werner von Siemens, who came up with the idea of an electromagnetic coil-driven speaker, was a driving force in arriving at this conclusion. Why are there magnets in speakers, you might ask? Every speaker nowadays has an electric current, something the inventors were discussing would never have taken for granted at any point in their lives. When this electric current is changing, it produces a magnetic field. To make the panel of the speaker move, magnets are used to create an opposing magnetic field which creates vibrations. These vibrations are the sound we end up hearing. 
the bigger the magnet, the louder the speaker will be. Another inventor, by the name of Thomas Edison from the US, had filed a British patent for a system using compressed air for an amplifying mechanism. The first commercial electric loudspeaker saw the light of day only in 1924. The sound quality produced by the speaker was good enough for motion pictures. It took nearly 20 years for the next groundbreaking development in the world of loudspeakers. This came with the arrival of the duplex driver in 1943. It offered better clarity and coherence at high volumes, which was important in movie theaters. Fittingly, it was nicknamed the voice of the theater. The duplex driver was immediately tested by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and instantly made its film house industry standard in 1955. Until now, this loudspeaker design is still used. Indeed, the film industry does seem to put a lot of effort into its sound, and so do the theaters we watch them in. You may have noticed that these buildings often have thick curtains on the walls. These are soundproof or acoustic curtains, and both are much thicker than regular curtains. They will either consist of heavier fabrics that are tightly woven or have better quality linings. This means that these curtains will absorb sound and reduce the acoustic reflection off the ceiling, windows, and flat walls of the room. This ultimately creates a much better sonic experience. The carpet floors are so thick in theaters for the same reason. It helps to trap sound by providing insulation. From a practical standpoint, this carpet is also set up to prevent the sound of footsteps during film screenings. This concept of trapping sound is also the reason why putting a phone inside a cup will make the phone speaker seem louder. Any speaker sitting or suspended in an open space projects its sound in all directions. As the speaker vibrates to create sound waves, an equal amount of energy leaves from both the front and the back. By placing a speaker in some form of enclosure, we can redirect some of the energy that comes from the back of the speaker and project it forwards. By putting the speaker in a cup, you're directing the sound more efficiently. It travels only one way, making it seem louder than what you'd hear when you take it out of the cup. Speaking of phones and speakers, ever wonder why your mobile device makes your speaker produce a buzzing noise? This can occur when the two gadgets are near one another and your mobile is trying to send and receive data. The transfer of information produces electromagnetic disturbances in the medium around the speakers. It creates noise in the audio, and as a result, you can hear the buzzing sound coming from the speaker. A simple way to protect the amazing vibe your speaker is creating for you from this irritating buzzing noise is just to move your phone away from your speaker, or vice versa. This will eliminate what is officially known as electromagnetic interference. Research across America shows that, on average, 74% of people own two or more pairs of headphones. 46% of them mention they listen to their headphones for more than two hours per day. Some choose the headphones by their looks, others by the sound quality. In either case, finding the right pair is important, since a lot of people are willing to spend over $100 on it. Headphones have become a true fashion accessory. That's why well-known figures are trying to make an impact in the headphone industry like it's the fashion industry. Music moguls Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine came up with the idea for the now world-famous Beats by Dre Headphones brand. They were walking along the Pacific Ocean one day in 2006, discussing a sneaker deal as they had an offer on the table from a major brand in that arena. After some discussions, they decided they wanted to do something they were more passionate about and landed on headphones. The duo's idea turned into a brand that was purchased by Apple in 2014 for $3 billion. It was the largest deal in Apple's history, and Beats by Dre controlled 70% of the headphone market at the time of signing. The move allowed Apple to take over the headphone space. The release of their popular wireless AirPods headphones in 2016 was another reason it happened. But how do these popular wireless headphones that many of us own actually work? These headphones rely on internal batteries to have enough power to remain wireless. Most often, they have conveniently built-in rechargeable batteries. But sometimes, they keep going thanks to standard AA or AAA batteries. 
They receive wirelessly transmitted signals from their paired audio sources, be it your phone or laptop. These signals are encoded by the source device and transmitted most commonly via radio frequencies or infrared carriers. The headphones receive the signal and decode it to audio. And just like that, it's music to your ears. Decades ago, no one would ever imagine keeping a stick in their pocket that could hold hundreds of gigabytes. We've come a long way since then and got used to USBs transferring our files from device to device with ease. In 2000, two major companies developed and sold the first USB flash drives 1.0, which snowballed into USB 2.0, 3.0, Type-C, and so on. Physically, they can endure rough treatment and won't get damaged easily, especially if you get proper protection. By design, USBs are almost perfect. So perfect that you always make the mistake of inserting it in the wrong way. Admit it, the two square holes are used to help the USB secure its position once it's inside the port. It's not strong enough to keep it stuck, but strong enough to do its job. You can protect your USB with proper encryption. This means that if anyone gets their hands on them, they won't be able to read them. Encrypted files end up being scrambled into gibberish of a series of letters and numbers instead of comprehensive words to anyone who tries to read it. The file is only accessible if someone gets their hands on that USB. But if you're using certain online services like messaging or emailing, then encryption is simply not enough. Sure, the person on the other end can't read the contents of the work, but the hosting website can. This is where end-to-end -end encryption comes in. That means any information that goes in and out is, again, scrambled into gibberish to anyone who is in the way of your traffic, including the hosting service. Cloud storage has taken the world by storm. You can now save everything that's on your desktop to the internet and access that data across multiple devices. All you need is an email and password and boom, you're safe and have all your files in one place. Cloud storage isn't data floating up in the clouds, but, less excitingly, servers that physically store data. They're like regular computers, just minus the monitors for viewing. These servers take up a lot of money. That's why you normally have to pay for their services. The servers are placed in data centers all around the world where third-party companies manage them. It's like getting remote access to a computer. The servers include a master control server, backup server, and a linked supply of servers operating to maintain a good quality service. The more money you pay, the better the server your data will be stored in. In the realm of computers, you just can't delete something to be gone forever. Whatever file you want to remove is already present in the hard disk as electrical impulses. And depending on your gadget, it will be disposed of in a recycle bin or the garbage. That isn't to say that it isn't still there. It simply implies that the file has been moved to a different folder from which you can easily recover it. So if you're worried about accidentally deleting a crucial document you've been working on for weeks, don't panic. It's not gone for good. But if your device breaks, then all your data is lost. If you own a device that has Windows 10, then you've probably been shutting down thinking that your computer or laptop is completely off. This is not the case. Windows 10 doesn't actually shut down, but goes into a state of hibernation. It keeps your app saved for you to recover. The proper way to shut it down is by resetting it. Windows operating system is known for being user-friendly with all the commands displayed in front of you. But for computer whiz kids, know that you can open the search bar and type CMD for the command prompt. It looks just like a bunch of random characters, but this is where you can achieve a lot with your device. If you don't like the black window, you can always change the color of your suiting. Once you launch the command prompt window, right-click on the title bar and then on Properties. Another window will open which has the option of choosing colors. You can pick the colors you want for the background and text or fix the opacity for the CMD window. This is easy mode. The real work is typing commands in the window. If you want to look for all your drivers on your Windows 10 device, then type in this command in the window. Don't forget to add spaces. The list of servers will magically pop up on your screen. This is a good way to get to the bottom of your issue, instead of searching for them manually. You can also hide specific folders on your computer, 
through the command prompt by typing this command and pressing enter. Of course, you'll have to type in the folder you want to hide, and poof, it's gone. The non-tech way of doing this is by opening the properties pane in the folder and clicking on the checkbox that shows hidden. While this is indeed the easy way of hiding your folders, it's not the most effective. You can simply write show hidden files and folders and every checkbox you check will be visible again. The command prompt isn't all about business. You can try playing a game there to pass the time. Don't expect a AAA kind with realistic graphics and epic gameplay. Type this command and you'll be transported into the game via text. This game will allow you to create characters and engage in this imaginary world. Google Chrome is one of the most popular browsers on the net, but you can also play a text-based game there, just like in the command prompt. First press Ctrl plus Shift plus J to open the console. Then type Text Adventure into the search box. Don't freak out, you just open the sort of a back end of the page. Next, click on the box that says Console. You'll be greeted with a text that will ask you if you want to play a game. Type Yes and you'll instantly begin. They'll give you some basic commands which are easy to follow and an opening premise of the journey. If you're looking for something a little more contemporary, then get ready to play some solitaire. No worries, you don't have to type some command to play it. All you need to do is type solitaire in the search bar, and you're there. You can play the exciting game of solitaire in your web browser. And when you get bored, you can play the classic game Pac-Man. If you're from the generation of the classic bulky phones, then this next game will bring back all those memories of your childhood. Open Google and type snake, and there you go. When the internet is down, you can play the dinosaur game in your browser window while you're impatiently waiting for the Wi-Fi to come back. This game is very simple. After pressing enter, you just have to hit the space bar to jump over obstacles. And at a certain point, you'll have the option to duck down, which will make it even more challenging. Even without Wi-Fi, you can still have a good time. You can pause the game whenever you want by pressing the Alt key or F11. You can just click on your screen to continue the game at any time. Windows 11 has some cool hidden features that are very useful, like adjusting the volume for each individual app. You can go to Settings and click on System. Hit the Sound section. This will bring you to all the sound levels and the master switch. Copy pasting is so essential to our everyday workflow that Windows 11 decided to take it to a whole other level with clipboard history. This option allows you to save your copied texts in one designated area, which you can access anytime. And the good news is that this option is also available on Windows 10. Just click on the Windows key plus V and you're good to go. If you have too many windows opened on Windows 11, you can grab the window that you want to keep and shake it. It will minimize all the remaining windows in the background so that you can have a pleasant, productive workflow. Oh wait, it's happening now! Seat belt on the passenger seats has a fabric loop. When put under a great amount of pressure, the stitches on the loop rip apart, so the excess fabric can assist in cushioning the passengers. The extra few inches can make a great difference within a dire circumstance. However, there isn't one on the driver's side. As the driver is so close to the steering wheel, it's safer for them not to have one. Seat belts were originally invented in the mid-19th century, though this technology wasn't brought into common practice until the 1960s. Pre-collision sensory technology has assisted with developing the safety of seat belts and other features to the next level. Effectively predicting a car's collision, the technology directs the seat belts to automatically tighten, aligning the airbags and ensuring the brakes will be preloaded to reduce shock. Every year, 6 million car accidents occur, which explains why all cars still must continue to develop safety features, not only to alleviate accidents, but to protect people more effectively within their cars. The materials that make up the body of cars only started getting replaced within the last 25 years ranging from aluminum and magnesium alloys to carbon fiber composites. These lighter materials not only enable a more fuel-efficient journey, but they also ensure that when a car is in an accident, 
Its build provides a crumple zone. As a car hits another object, the crumple zone absorbs energy from the collision. Although this would appear to cause more damage to the car, it helps prevent impact on the passengers. Front and rear bumpers are very underrated, and due to their long history of being used in cars, you can't imagine a time we didn't use them. They were invented in the late 1800s. The bumpers evolved over the years to the point we don't even realize we have them. But they're there, quietly waiting under the outer covers, consisting of compressible foam or plastic around a rigid reinforced bar. All the windows of your car are made of glass, but the windshield is made of a shatterproof version. It's laminated, so whatever might hit it, you can be sure there won't be any shards of glass falling into the front seats. Normal glass was used up until the 1950s. As vehicles became more prominent, they made modifications to ensure safety. Airbags seem like another common feature that has always been there. In fact, they were originally invented in 1968 and were ahead of their time. They slowly gained popularity, and through safety precautions for cars, they eventually became mandatory for all cars to have only in 1998. They have since developed from just being an airbag within the steering wheel. Today, depending on the vehicle, they can be located throughout the car, ensuring all potential passengers will be protected. Crash sensors connected to an onboard computer detect when a collision occurs and trigger the bags, inflating within milliseconds and providing a cushioned safety within a blink of an eye. It can be difficult to predict the weather and even more so to determine traction on the road. In the late 1960s, anti-lock braking systems, ABS, were implemented in vehicles. Before that, they had been used in many aircraft, with designs going as far back as 1908. They soon became a necessity for all vehicles, ensuring traction is maintained on slippery surfaces and that there is complete control when braking. Today, ABS has advanced so much that the latest variations ensure further detection when there are strong crosswinds. Cruise control, initially invented in 1948, has been in constant development over many decades. Today, adaptive cruise control ensures that when the car is cruising at a constant speed and detects a slower car ahead, it will then adjust the speed to match the car in front. Other advanced variants may also ensure the car will make a complete stop once identifying that the car in front has done the same. It's easy to forget to have your high beams on when driving on the long and lonesome road for many hours. Automatic high beams are quickly becoming more common. High-tech camera modules can easily determine what type of light is passing through and help ensure when the high beam will be necessary. Although versions of automatic high beams have been around since the 1950s, they counted on light-sensitive sensors and were very unreliable. The new varieties can identify the sources of light, whether it's from the sun, directly from a car's light, or even from the reflection on a sign, ensuring you won't cause issues with other drivers. It's a pain in the neck to have to ensure there isn't anyone creeping into that semi-visible corner, the blind spot, which causes around 400,000 accidents per year. Solar sensors within rear bumpers of vehicles and blind spot monitoring systems watch and identify adjacent lanes. They alert the driver that a vehicle may be in the lane beside them, whether by flashing lights on the dash or from beeping sounds. This way, they help to alleviate the many concerns the blind spot causes. 1.6 million road accidents are caused by texting and driving, and fatigue normally causes up to 10% of all car accidents per year. The driver attention monitor helps to alleviate both statistics. It works through sensors that monitor the car's movements and the amount of steering corrections to ensure the driver is paying attention to the road. When the system identifies that the driver isn't completely awake or is slightly distracted with their phone, it will prompt signals to suggest it's time for a break. Tires are among the most critical components for your car, with a close relationship with whatever path you take. Many safety features rely on the tires themselves for their own independent purposes. That's why it's super important to ensure the tires are always in top condition. Tire pressure monitoring systems check the air pressure of all four tires, ensuring you're aware when they need their pressure increased to avoid the risk of a blowout. The constant evolution in technologies continues to ensure you stay safe on longer stretches of the road. 
Lane departure warnings focus on the lines on the road, ensuring the car stays within. Whenever a car starts drifting over a line in the road without signaling to do so, the camera-based feature identifies and signals to the driver. The Lane Keeping Assist feature follows the same method of identifying when the car is intruding the bordering lane. When it gets too close, it will readjust the steering and center the car within its appropriate lane. Other features in more advanced cars have autonomous driving capabilities. The autopilot systems have taken cruise control to the next level. Not only does it allow the vehicle to steer itself in the intended lane while maintaining a set speed, but it also changes lanes when required, making the ride more and more efficient. Some safety features are only just making a trend in car models worldwide. For example, night vision using thermographic cameras to look out for pedestrians and animals nearby. It goes within the infotainment screen, facing frontwards and identifying objects from their heat signatures. It's estimated that there are over 1.4 billion cars in use worldwide. And as the world's population increases, it's expected that the number of cars will follow suit. Safety features will continue to adapt further beyond what we know of today. Infrared headlights will be further adapted to be used in conditions with poor visibility, like storms, snow, and fog. They'll be capable of enhancing the visibility of the driver in all conditions without affecting the sight of passing drivers. Driver override systems will soon be able to monitor and identify human behavior. Whether due to reckless conduct on the road or for other safety precautions, cars will soon have the functionality to take complete control of themselves, ensuring both the passenger's and the driver's safety. Augmented reality windshields are in early development already, providing some indicator reflections from the dash onto the windshield. So it's quite possible that soon all necessary directions from maps and alerts will appear right in front of the driver to ensure they never take their eyes off the road. Airbags will soon not only just be used within a car to ensure the passenger's safety, they will also activate from the outside of the car once they identify a definitive collision. The airbags will inflate outwards, covering the entire outside of the car and drastically reducing its impact. It may be so advanced that the bodywork of the car won't even need to be buffed out. The future technology of cars is expected to be so progressive that the cars themselves will have their own form of communication, not with human drivers, but with other cars. Just imagine, cars communicating and sharing information as they identify roadblocks, issues on the road, or disruptive weather patterns. It will all ensure the most efficient and safest route possible. So get this, an extra hole at the upper part of the sink has multiple hidden functions. First, in case someone forgets to close the tap, the water won't overflow and the bathroom won't get flooded. Second, thanks to that hole, the water drains faster and it gives an escape for the air, helping the water flow down. Those two holes on a side of any Converse shoe are not only to let the stinky air out. Sure, breathability is important for any athlete. The second reason is that athletes lace through those holes to get a better grip. Donuts have a hole in the middle and it doesn't stand for O in donut. It's not designed for an easier grip either, though it can be quite convenient. It's actually made this way for mass baking so that they can cook all the way through evenly. Baby carrots are tiny and, unlike regular carrots, wet. Baby carrots aren't some special sort of carrots. They're actually made of regular carrots by cutting off the skin and outer layers and then polishing them to look that pretty. The problem is that they can't retain moisture. A regular carrot retains some water inside because of the layers that locks it in. Once they're chopped out, baby carrots can dry out easily, so they usually sell them in bags with some water inside. Toy stores are filled with Beanie Baby plush toys, and a detail that is even more iconic than their huge eyes is their tags saying TY. That's a small manufacturing company not so many people have heard of. Beanie Babies appeared in 1993, and they went insanely popular. TY is the name of the company, but it's not an abbreviation. It's the actual name of the company's founder, H. Ty Warner. Most metallic zippers have a hidden lock inside them to save you from awkward situations, such as an undone fly. Oh boy. Don't leave the zipper handle in an upward position. When you pull it downwards, it automatically locks. 
It's all thanks to those tiny grooves hidden underneath the handle. Almost any public toilet has a large gap between the floor and the door. The reason for such a zero privacy thing is to actually minimize the level of privacy and comfort so that people wouldn't stay there long and there'd be no lines. It's also easier to clean and safer if some emergency occurs. Headrests in a car are about comfort and detachable headrests are about safety. If you pull the headrest out of a seat, you'll see two bars, which are quite sturdy. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, you can get out of there smashing the window with these bars. Many cups and mugs have little grooves on the bottom on purpose. They're designed for dishwashing machines. The grooves let the water flow and not spill over your feet when you take the cup out. Also, those grooves let the air flow, so the cup doesn't crack even if the tea is scalding. Almost all measuring tapes have a metal tip with a small slot on the end. You can use this slot to hang the tape on a nail or a screw to make measurements without anyone's help. Sometimes this tip has a row of sharp points along the edge on one side. That comes in handy when you want to leave a mark without using a pencil. Doorknobs are usually made of brass, bronze, and some other copper alloys for a reason. They have an antibacterial effect, so they stop microbes from spreading. They get rid of a range of harmful germs pretty fast, within a couple of hours. But don't forget to wash your hands anyway. Grocery carts have loops for a reason. You don't want to put your jacket in a cart next to potatoes and onions. Hang it on a loop. This little hook-like thing is there to help you better organize the space in your cart. The carts also have a super handy grid. Whenever the cart's full, you just need to lift the grid and attach the shopping basket for extra purchases. Placing it in between the horizontal bar above the wheels and the hooks the grid has. A point in an ointment cap is there for a reason too. Most tubes are usually sealed with foil, and it's better to avoid opening it with fingers unless you're ready to say goodbye to your nails. A point easily opens even the most safely sealed tube. Silica gel can often be found in different things you buy like bags, shoes, and many others. Don't throw it away. It's meant to absorb excess moisture, so anytime your shoes are a bit wet, just throw in a packet with silica gel. People used to co-live with rats, and these guys like gnawing on everything they see in their way, including paper. Still, rats weren't able to chew more than the space left on the margins. That black grate on a microwave isn't just some fancy decoration. It's called a Faraday shield, and it prevents the rays from escaping the microwave. It also speeds up the heating, so you can enjoy yesterday's leftovers faster. It may also block phone signals, so if you're tired of numerous calls, just put the phone into a microwave, but don't turn it on. All Tic Tac containers are designed to dispense one Tic Tac every time you open it. The lid has the same shape as the candy. Turn the container upside down, gently shake it, and open it slowly. You'll notice only one candy stuck between those lid grooves. So if you just open the container and shake it until five or even more candies fall into your mouth, it means you've been eating Tic Tacs wrong all this time. Those little holes in the airplane windows are designed to control the cabin pressure. They also protect the windows from fogging up as the temperatures drop and rise. By the way, the airplane window is round for a reason. This way, pressure is evenly distributed so it doesn't get deformed. Blue bristles on a toothbrush are actually an indicator that it's just about time to change the brush. As the bristles get in contact with water, the blue, or whatever other, pigment fades away. So the more you use it, the duller the color becomes. A triple handle on a jerry can is there to make it easier for two people to carry it and distribute the fuel evenly. Gas cans often have a second hole that actually needs to be uncapped too before you pour the gas. The air passage will prevent it from pouring out so no more fuel waste. Jeans first appeared in 1873. They were invented by Jacob Davis and Levi Strauss. Davis was a tailor who was producing covers and tents, and Strauss was a businessman who, among other things, was selling cloth. The first jeans were made by Davis from denim, the fabric he bought from Levi Strauss & Co. Together, they patented the design. 
Blue was a standard color for denim that was dyed using an indigo dye. The blue color is a tradition that is still often followed today to replicate the original look of a pair of jeans. Jeans also have metal rivets, and they've been there from the very beginning. Jacob Davis, the man who made the first pair of jeans, added copper rivets to spots where pants were more likely to rip, flies, and pockets to make them stronger. Today, they have more of a decorative purpose since they're distinctive and traditional for jeans. Another special thing about jeans is those tiny pockets they have that seemingly serve no purpose. Well, maybe it's true now, but years ago, when many cowboys were wearing jeans, the pocket was made specifically to keep a pocket watch there. Also, back then, a pair of jeans had just four pockets. That tiny pocket, the watch pocket, two big pockets in front, and just one pocket on the back. Many zippers have the letters YKK engraved on them. It's an abbreviation that stands for the name of the company that can be translated as Yoshida Manufacturing Shareholding Company. This Japanese company is the largest zipper manufacturer in the world, so they put their initials on all the zippers they produce. That's around half of the zippers in the world. And that's why you see their zippers more often than any other zippers. Those little white golf balls have dimples all over them. It turns out they aren't there just randomly. At first, golfers were playing with a smooth ball. With time, the ball would get all punched and damaged, but also it would start to travel way further. The reason here is aerodynamics. Dimples allow the air to flow more smoothly around the ball, taking it further. So the idea was adopted and the balls got their dimples all around, allowing them to travel longer distances. Did you ever notice that the toilet paper color is usually white? But this color wasn't always a favorite. In fact, colored toilet papers popped out on the shelves in the 1950s. Homeowners purchased pink, blue, yellow, green, and even black paper because these colors matched the interior. But eventually, many doctors began to associate the dye in colored toilet papers with increased health risks. Also, the dye didn't allow the colored paper to decompose as quickly when it was flushed down which increased the risk of clogging septic tanks. This made manufacturing and retail prices too high compared to the basic white paper, and eventually, the demand began to fall. And now, let's take a closer look at these fancy patterns. Most people probably don't care about the decorations when it comes to their toilet paper. However, these patterns still exist. But why? Well, there are several opinions. Some say it's just a marketing tool. Manufacturers use pretty decor to make their products look more aesthetically pleasing and to make customers associate their brand with elegance and a luxurious lifestyle. Another explanation is more practical. These patterns fluff up the paper, which makes it more absorbent. Speaking of fluffiness, have you ever wondered why they have such rough toilet paper in public toilets? The most obvious answer is that high-quality toilet paper is more expensive. Also, companies prefer purchasing giant rolls of low-quality paper because they can change them less frequently. This decision also helps prevent stealing. Yes, people actually steal paper from public toilets. Have you ever noticed that light switches in public toilets are usually placed outside? Well, it's not a coincidence. Construction companies do it for safety reasons because, as we all know, electricity plus water is a dangerous combination. And light switches are connected to power. Therefore, electricity literally flows through them. Of course, professionally installed switches will have a bunch of additional safety precautions. But most builders prefer not to take risks. The UK has far stricter rules for light switch safety compared to the US. That's why, if you live in London, you'll probably find light switches outside the bathroom more commonly. But don't worry, most bathrooms in the US feature independent electrical circuits. This provides additional safety in case of accidental electric shock. When any change in the electrical current happens, they should shut off automatically. There are so many awesome lighting opportunities in this world. But why are the traffic lights red, green, and yellow? Turns out there's a reasonable explanation for it. Before traffic lights for cars, there were traffic signals for trains. At first, railroad operators used white color to mean go, red to mean stop, 
and green to mean caution. But later, they realized that white wasn't such a good idea because bright white light could easily be mistaken for stars during the nighttime. So railway companies changed the white color for green to mean go and yellow to mean caution because these colors are easily distinguishable from the others. And eventually, this tradition spread to traffic lights for cars and became a standard. As for the red color, it has the longest wavelength, which means that drivers can see it from a greater distance than other colors. And the color yellow was chosen as a caution sign because it has a slightly shorter wavelength than red, but still longer than green. What's the dustiest room in your house? Usually, the answer is a bedroom, but why? Bedrooms tend to generate dust from skin cells, dust mites, and fibers from fabrics in your bed sheets, carpets, and curtains. If you have a pet, its fur and skin cells add a significant amount of dirt to this dusty party. Luckily, there are simple ways to make your bedroom less dusty. This includes making your bed every day and cleaning the area regularly with both a vacuum cleaner and water. You can try to get rid of carpets and unnecessary furniture and decor items that tend to collect dust. Also, pay attention to the quality when you buy curtains or bed sheets. The looser the fabric, the more dirt it collects. And finally, you can ban your pet from entering the bedroom. But let's be honest, you would never do that. Modern air purifiers, air conditioners, and ceiling fans can help make your sleeping area cozier. But make sure to clean them regularly. Otherwise, if your filter is dirty or clogged up with fur or any other pollutants, it won't collect new dust properly. And the dust would end up on your bedroom surfaces. Speaking of dust, did you know that you can clean the edge of a broom with a dustpan? This zigzag over here is not only for aesthetic purposes, you can use it as a comb for the bristles. Have you ever had these marks behind your ears after wearing your glasses? Sometimes it can even take them weeks to go away. Well, it's a sign that the side pieces of the glasses, called temples, are not adjusted properly for your head. In other words, they're too tight. This can cause skin irritation and even headaches. If they're bent towards the area behind your ears, they can press on the fragile part of the skull. So, keep in mind that temples should not only have the correct size, but also correct adjustment. A professional optician can easily fix this problem. It's way safer than trying to do it on your own. Box graders can be used in a horizontal position too. In many cases, it's much more convenient to grate a carrot or a big block of cheese this way. If you want to grate a soft product like goat cheese or mozzarella, you can put them in the freezer for about 30 minutes before grating. Also, there's a way to make the cleanup easier and prevent the cheese from sticking. Spray the grater with a small amount of oil before using it. And now, let's take a look at the most unpopular sides of the box grater. Have you ever used them? This side is actually designed for slicing. It's pretty handy if you want to make thin vegetable slices for your salad or pasta. Or slice potato chips. And these tiny punched out holes are designed for zesting or very finely grating. Graters are pretty useful for the next non-food tip. If you're on a budget, you can purchase this super cheap laundry soap. Grate a small amount and throw it right into your washing machine instead of using the regular washing gel. Did you know that you can change which way the refrigerator door opens? There are hinges over here. If you attach them on the other side, the doors will swing the other way. But before trying to do any repairs by yourself, make sure to disconnect the power source and read the instructions for your particular model of the fridge. Have you ever noticed that there's a shiny side and a dull side to tinfoil? Many people believe that it matters which side is used up or down because the shiny side would trap the heat better. But in fact, it makes no difference at all. The manufacturing process makes the two sides look slightly different, but they both serve their purpose equally. Tin foil can be used not only in the kitchen. Here's a little known battery hack. Let's say you're out of AA batteries. No worries, use a smaller AAA battery and a bit of tin foil. Just insert it on one of the ends. 
This will work because both AA and AAA batteries carry the same amount of voltage. Did you know that Chinese takeout food containers unfold and turn into plates? All you have to do is just to disassemble it from the two sides, and gravity will do the rest. By the way, the old school name for this type of paperboard container is an oyster.